And we continue uh, this, this track with a talk about leveraging event streaming to supercharge your business solutions uh, by Mari Griglecki, uh, Senior Streaming Developer Advocate at Data Stacks. Uh, Thank you. you know, hello, Mari. How are you? Hello, Maddie. Good, good, good. How are you? I'm, I'm doing really well. You know, the goal of this track is really to show the latest trend. So LLMs sure. or terms, uh, supply chain risk management, and now streaming, event streaming. So let's go for that. Sure. Thanks a lot, Mehdi. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. I know we don't have too much time, so I'm going to get started. So um, my title is about leveraging event streaming to supercharge your business solutions. Now, I actually came from more of a developer background, so I tend to talk more, you know, kind of uh, to the developers. So, so I'm hoping that, you know, kind of bridge, you know, like developers understanding and really uh, maybe some of you are here to really search for solutions. How do you solve problems, right? And so I like to propose to event streaming is a kind of a must have type of, uh, you know, kind of mechanical, if you kind of treat it like that uh, type of systems and they're complex. And, and so I want to explain that to you. So let me then, before I start, right, uh, if you like, uh, you know, a, a, a you know, slide deck, uh, you, you can actually use this bit.ly link and connect to it and the QR code. Um, I've also shared this with the uh, organizer too. So I won't leave this on for too long and I'll share this page with you again uh, towards the end of this presentation. Even if you miss it, don't worry, we'll be able to share that with you. Okay, so really quick, yeah, I'm a developer advocate at uh, Datastax. As you know, you, you may be aware, Datastax is a company that's, you know, flagship product is uh, really Cassandra, is NoSQL, is really proven, used by a lot of enterprise uh, organization. And then the company expanded, has expanded out, you know, with this strong kind of data at rest type of capability. We also want to add in data in motion, which is Apache Pulsar underneath driving, you know, the event stream platform. And then now, to also data in use, right? There's also Cascada, the other open source options and companies moving towards, you know, really like catching up with the times with AI and uh, machine learning towards that direction and having this strong infrastructure is what we want to introduce you to today. So anyway, so that's me. And then um, th these are just some of the pictorial rep representation of myself. I'm also a Java champion, also the president of the Chicago Java Users Group, very active in the tech community. Want to encourage everybody to be involved. I believe that, you know, we can make this tech place much better, you know, much more kind of collaborative in some sense, right? So I, I think it's great. We're building great stuff. And then also too, I'm involved, you know, with Pulsar, with uh, Open Liberty previously at IBM, where I was a developer advocate for three, four years. I, I just love my job. I love interacting with folks. So my particular interest area are really mostly, you know, streaming, the event processing, the reactive systems, the, you know, I've worked also with some IoT, MQTT. So, and then you can contact me at any time. These are the different uh, ways of contacting me. And again, I'll share with you towards the end of this presentation. So, okay, so really quickly, uh, kind of go through what I'm be talking about, the agenda. Uh, want to kind of first, you know, talk about computing events, right? There's a lot of confusion too, and there are a lot of, um, you know, kind of uh, interesting kind of concepts behind this. And it can be confusing as well. And when I talk with folks, folks are talking to me about event storming, event streaming, processing. I mean, how are they different? Let's sort that this out first before we get into the API kind of way on how do you interact, you know, with this uh, platform underneath the hood. So bear with me a couple minutes talking about basics and then also essentially to the kind of use cases that you can leverage on event streaming. And then I'll introduce to you Apache Pulsar, and that's what is powering the uh, data stacks, the, our cloud platform with all of the event streaming capability. Uh, then I'll share with you too what we have right at, at data stacks, our Astra streaming, um, and also some resources. Now, if I have time, because this is a shorter uh, time duration, uh, I've done this uh, presentation with some demos. So if there's time, I'll do a bit of demo. Okay, so let me start. Many The many facets of computing events. Okay, so let's kind of try to understand first, you know, before we start, what is an event, right, generically speaking? The thing is, though, I think our minds have been pretty much trained or kind of like tuned to thinking of things in, you know, solving problems in a more kind of, so to speak, simplified way, you know, kind of uh, way of doing things. And think of, you know, if you're a programmer, we are kind of learning things and doing it in a very synchronous fashion. 
we're kind of breaking things down step by step, right? And that's perfectly okay. It's a great way to learn because as we know, computing is a very complex process, right? And it involves a lot of kind of, uh, you know, brain power. And also too, not only that, I think it's artistic in some sense because how you solve problems are very different. How we approach solving problems are so different, right? So let's kind of understand your event first. The thing is, though, when what we are trained for, you know, in our mind is not about events. It means just first think of the fact that events, right? We live in an event driven world. Everything is event. Think of the fact that, you know, even how life begins, right? It's an event. You know, a baby is born. That's an event. Once it happens, you can't turn back in time is there. Likewise, in the computing sense to an event happen, right? We want to capture that moment. That moment carries with it data. And that's what we're trying to work with all of the data that's floating around, it means a lot to us, right? So baby is an example. This event, you know, this conference is an event, um, a, a rock concert, right? That's an event, you know, a sporting event, you know, all these things, events. So now that we understand the event, that's what we're trying to do, capture all the data, understanding it from a mathematical point of view, a scientific way, you know, from the point of view of relativity. So if you kind of look at relatively, the, the, you know, the definition would be is, you know, multidimensional when we talk about events, you know, it can happen in space and time. Again, it's immutable. Once it happens, you can't go back in time. But essentially, if you kind of plot it on a graph, right, that event will change over time. But single event is basically a data point in space and time. It has the X, Y, Z coordinate, right? That's, I think that should be simple enough. We all have learned some math, right? The geometry. X, Y, Z is the space, but it doesn't represent everything because it keeps changing. So there's a time element to it. So that makes it very interesting. And that's what we're trying to do in here, event streaming, capturing the change of state of data as it travels through time. Not only that, we are doing it in you know real life scenario in which everything, every event can happen at unpredictable times, right? And we're handling asynchronous style of processing, right? Not like everything marching at the same rhythm. It, that will never happen. So, okay, so that's with a bit of a background, let's kind of get a bit more into these different terminologies. So if you kind of look at it, right? Again, you know, I talk about event streaming, event messaging, event processing, event sourcing, event storming, event driven architecture. They can mean, you know, different things to different people maybe, or kind of the level of understanding. So let's try to kind of sort them out in here. Um, I've given a lot of thoughts to this too. How can we explain, right? So essentially every event carries with it some data Data that can be, you know, very crucial. You want to mine the data from it. And then also a collection of many streams, you know, and that's the challenge too. And uh, sometimes, you know, messaging can drop all of these things. So that's what it is. We need a system that can guarantee delivery of all of these data, these messages, right, from one point to the other. That's the goal. So event messaging, right, if we kind of look into it, it's really the basic, the more like, to me, is more primitive sense that we're taking care of data traveling from point A to point B. That's what it is, right? There, there are many ways of doing it. So we'll look at it uh, in a few seconds, but right now event messaging is what it is. And then there's also the, also the streaming. Streaming is really dealing with this event, the data points happen in space and time in large quantities too. It's not just one event. We're living in complex times, a million kinds of events happening every single day, right? And not just a million, is you know, kind of an indefinite number of it. That's event streaming. And then there's also the processing part, you know, while we have data, it doesn't make sense if we don't do something to it or extract the information or analyze what it is and figure something out. So that's event processing. And then if you kind of also look into it, right, overall, the architecture is event driven architecture and architecture that takes into account the events that are happening in space and time, capturing all of the data, um, all of these things, notifications, um, you know, monitoring systems and, you know, fraud detection, for example, things like that. And then there's also event storming, which is actually more of a data domain driven design kind of approach of analyzing requirements, pulling in all the stakeholders. That's more about requirements, gathering, understanding and kind of 
brainstorming essentially all of the events that can happen. And then there's also event sourcing, which I won't go into a lot of details because we can spend a couple lectures talking about it. It's very interesting too. It's basically capturing all of these, these events as they change over time. And that will allow message to replay much more easier than the traditional way of just a database capturing the state of some things, right? Like an order entry, for example, it can change state from, you know, you, you get the order, new order, and then in process, and then um, payment of these things. Instead of just capturing that single state at any given point in time, we want to do it capturing every single point in time as it changed. So then you can go back to doing message replay, diagnosis of these things. So that's event sourcing. Won't get into all the details now. Okay, and then there are also things that I'm highlighting. There are reactive systems, microservices, stateful, stateless, all of these, and then serverless applications. All of these are very relevant to today's world. We are kind of making sense out how we can leverage on event kind of computing way of doing things to, to kind of implement systems that way. Okay, so let me real, real quickly, I, I know that I'm looking at the clock. So event streaming processing, as I talk about, right? Event is each data point in the systems. Stream is an ongoing delivery of these events. And each e the event happens in space and time. If you think of a cube, you know, kind of a space, events happen, you can't wipe it out, it's there. You can't wipe it. And so basically each event changes, you know, the data, kind of happens in point in time and it changes. So you plot it, that's the stream. So many events together, a collection of them is streaming data, data streams. And then complex event processing is essentially not just capturing these, you know, kind of event data ingesting into the system. It's really the processing part that kind of gives it more value. You analyze the data, derives some, some kind of insights. For example, I mentioned too about fraud detection system is a prime candidate to use uh, event-driven approach or event, uh, I should say, event uh, streaming approach because data com keeps coming in. You have many bank account holders and, and then you want to make sure that all of their accounts are secure. And so you want to make sure activities are, you know, kind of legitimate. If something something is kind of a slight, even a slight bit of suspicion, you want to notify the account holders, right? You need to do a lot of analysis. analysis. So that's an, an example of complex event processing. You do event ingestion first and then pass it on. For example, like, uh, you know, we can kind of look at LinkedIn, this, um, you know, uh, everybody has it. You see that we have news feed, we have like our profile, how many people are looking at your profile, everything is in real time. So basically, you want to ingest the data and look at this data in real time. You don't want to wait, you know, for collecting all the data and then analyze it. You want to have data comes in immediately analyze and give all the feedback and display it on your screen. So like LinkedIn newsfeed. So those are kind of example of complex event uh, processing. And now let's take a look to um, event driven messaging. I already kind of talked about it. Uh, messages traveling from point A to point B. There's a event driven kind of messaging is basically send sender, right? Send the messages and it doesn't care about who is going to receive it. It's up to those who are interested to subscribe to the message and then they can receive it. So that's one form of event driven messaging. And then there's also message driven, which is basically think of a queue, right? There's a queue waiting in line. So sender will send the messages to the queue. It has to know where to send the messages to. That queue has an address. So you send it to it and receiver will receive the messages, pick things up from the queue. So once it's picked up, it will be gone. So that's kind of uh, event differences between event-driven and message-driven messaging. And now let's take a look too. Using the event approach isn't the only way. Basically, we live more in a batch processing world. But first, let's take a look at event um, approach. So you have an event some data that comes in, you immediately process it, right? I talk about that. It's a very real-time kind of way of doing things. Whereas for batch processing, some data comes in, you just collect them, collect them, and maybe at some point in time, you batch them up together and process them. So as you can see, it's slower, but yet some cases too, you may want to use batch processing. For example, employee, you know, kind of information system, those are not urgent. You want to collect all of the changes during the day and process them and during the night, right? So you don't take up valuable computing resources during the day. And now 
Then take a look too at streaming and getting a bit more into detail is the approach, you know, an architecture approach called pop sub, right? Publish, subscribe. So that describes event driven kind of messaging. Messages get sent by the publisher and it's up to the subs subscriber. If I'm interested in it, I'll subscribe to it. And very often we describe it, for example, Apache Pulsar, Apache Kafka, these are topics, right? Topics identify the messages that it is. And so a subscriber will need to subscribe to the topic in order to receive it when there are messages. And then the broker, you do require this architecture require broker to be there to actually receive the messages, owns the topic and deliver the messages accordingly to whoever is subscribing to it. So that's kind of like the basic working. Now, there are many different vendors, they can implement it differently, but essentially this is kind of like the core kind of mechanism of a pop sub type of way of doing things. And you can have multiple producers producing to the same topic or different topics, you know, in a cloud infrastructure, living in multiple cluster, um, you know, or kind of in the same cluster, but they can be partitioned off in different nodes and servers, things like that. And likewise for the subscriber side. And now there's also message queuing. So queuing too, as you can see, very much like pops up way of doing things, you decouple the sender and the receiver. However, the way it does it is that you send messages, you know, to a queue. So the queue is kind of known address for the sender to send messages to, and the receiving end will kind of receiver will receive, pick up the messages when I need it. And when it is picked up, is re removed from the queue. So these are kind of similar kind of purposes, right? Decoupling very, very high frequency, um, allowing for high volumes of data being sent from point A to point B. Okay, so now some event streaming use cases, right? Let's kind of take a look. Real-time data applications, right? So it gives better digital experiences. As I mentioned, it's a real-time kind of aspect of this kind of event, modern day uh, event streaming approach, right? And you don't need to wait, you know, data comes in, you immediately see the result, you know, pretty much in real time, near real time, I would say. Um, and then for example, there's also data science, right? In today's world, there are talks here too that talks about AI, um, you know, machine learning. Those are definitely prime candidates too for leveraging on event streaming because the data, as it comes in, we want to immediately analyze and then update your AI model, right? The data model, the algorithms too. So you want to have a very fast turnaround. Once you analyze, you update the model and deploy it back into production and so on and so forth. So AI machine learning uh, kind of like prime candidate for using event streaming. And then there's also edge computing, for example, IOT. Those are also like, you know, requires like very fast, you know, ingestion of data and basically to meets the demands of large, these large volumes of data. Um, and IOT, industrial IOT applications are also prime candidate. Now, this is kind of just an example of an agricultural, just want to kind of uh, pique your interest, kind of, um, you know, if, if you haven't thought of it, like how about, you know, some cows, because this is actually a talk I did with a, uh, a community colleague, right? And then we talk about Kafka and Pulsar, how can we make it kind of work together? But anyway, event streaming can be applied to an agricultural case in which you have cows, you know, roaming the hills. And what if the cow get lost, you know, in an enterprise operation? So you want to maybe attach, you know, some IoT devices to it so you can track the GPS location. And so at the end of the day, you need to gather all the cows back to the barn. And so if you count, you realize something is missing, you can immediately identify it. So it can actually leverage on an event streaming kind of pipeline and, and know where the cows are too. Okay, so um, again, you know, kind of like quickly kind of uh, summing up, right? Event streaming can be used in many, many, many things. In fact, a lot of things you know, all things where event streaming is needed, right? So it allows for events, you know, to you watch for the events with the system or the application. You only get, you know, the data that you're interested in, right? You make decisions in real time and allow for high volumes of, of messages with very low latency. And then this is just a quick kind of thing to compare to. There are modern day streaming that we're dealing with, and there are also not streaming. Uh, it's basically, I can kind of compare with ETL systems, extract, transform, load. And the difference is that, as you can see, they all ingest some data and then process it, right? And then write it to uh, some destination for the modern day streaming. Whereas if it is like ETL systems, normally you involve a database or some sort of file system to store the intermediate data. Now, anytime we deal with any kind of file 
files or database, it incur a cost, right? It's kind of IO, disk IO. So that will incur, incur time to it. So as you can see, the modern day streaming is that I ingest the data quickly. For example, Apache Pulsar, and then let's say I send it down to Apache Flink or Apache Pino or some, some other library that can do real time analysis. Immediately too, you process the data or even using a Pulsar function within Pulsar, that you can transform the data, you write it out to the sink in, in, um, in memory. It makes it really, really fast. So, okay, now, so really quick introduction to Pulsar. Pulsar is an open source uh, project uh, in the Apache Software Foundation and the, you know, many kind of thousands of uh, libraries. And it initially was developed by Yahoo and they realized they need an event streaming platform that can operate really good in the cloud. And uh, so basically, it's a very much of a cloud native uh, design, right? Cluster based. Also has this concept of multi tenancy where all your messages are already kind of grouped according to different, you know, tenants, right? The, the, the words to use. So you kind of separate out, you can be in the same physical cluster, but logically these, me these messages can be grouped underneath different uh, tenants, right? They are different namespaces, so they don't conflict with one another. And also too, when you work with Pulsar, you work with the broker. The broker is the kind of quite important, like the centerpiece, right? Managing, receiving all the data and also dispatching them accordingly. And then, um, in Pulsar's case, you can write, you know, in languages of your choice. You can do Java, you can do Go, you can do Python, you can do um, um, uh, what you call like uh, C Sharp, right, and .NET too, and other community contributions such as Scala, um, Haskell, and Rust, and you name it, right, it, it is there. So you can check that, it's open source. And then also messages are guaranteed delivery as well. So that's another very important aspect of it. And then also I mentioned too about the Pulsar function. So it, it allows for data being transformed as the data is traveling through the pipeline and it's very lightweight fashion. And then also one more kind of, uh, kind of important thing to it, you know, in addition to other important features is the tiered storage offloads. So you, you know, anytime you operate in the cloud, you get charged, you know, if your data is sitting in the primary storage area. Now, some messages can become cold or inactive. So in that case, you might want to move the, the data to off, kind of like more cold storage, for example, S3 buckets, you know, that cost less, Google file system, something like that. So Pulsar itself too has a native kind of built in to, to manage it for you. So then if, you know, over a certain period of time, your message is still sitting there and it's not active, it's basically you can tell, you know, Pulsar to move them off to offload second tier storage that will cost you less. And now really quick too, what is Pulsar, right? So just want to quickly share with you the number of GitHub stars, the number of contributors, number of, you know, uh, contributors uh, keep rising too, so. And then who else is using Pulsar? So these are just some examples. Yahoo is still using it, and especially uh, Yahoo Japan as well, that we actually uh, data stacks work with. And Verizon, uh, some of these are, you know, the major vendors out there. And also too, wanting to point out there's this connectors. You can basically connect, um, uh, you know, uh, with, with Pulsar too. It works with many different systems. So kind of very flexible, right? You work with many different databases, including here are all the major databases like Cassandra, uh, MariaDB, Oracle, you know, Postgres, you name it, it's there. Messaging systems like Kafka, we also work with them. Language clients, as I mentioned, you know, the, the client language API bindings are many with all kinds of major language languages are there. And then monitoring like Splunk or Datadog and software as a service like Twitter messaging, Apache, uh, actually, what is it? Apache Kinesis. And so these are just a few examples. And how is Pulsar different? You may want to ask, right? So as I kind of mentioned about it, there's producer, consumer, you write code to it, you interact with the serverless uh, broker that's running there, very important. And then also, one thing which I wanted to point out is that Pulsar is interesting. Anytime you deal with event streaming platform, you deal with all of these messages. You don't want to lose them, but yet they are also like a laundry baskets of many things. And so you don't want the broker to be slowed down by that. So then, you know, think of them like laundry baskets of clothes, right? So anyway, the, not to say like that, but the thing is somebody needs to manage it. So basically, 
pro, uh, the, the pulsar has delegated it to Apache Bookkeeper to handle it. As such, you know, Bookkeeper is a very efficient um, kind of uh, messaging, kind of persistence, uh, kind of layer library, and it's very fast and man it segments off all of the messages, so it makes it very very fast. You know, fast read and fast write, and it handles all of it for you. Broker will coordinate with the Bookkeeper if you need to do message replay, look up some old messages. You can always go through using the reader interface and talk and then broker. Uh, the reader interface is another set of APIs where you can talk with the bookkeeper and get all of these messages back. And then also too, at the present moment, Pulsar is still relying on Zookeeper to help manage things in a cloud environment in which you know, all of the cluster metadata, the coordination of different you know, Pulsar uh, clusters is handled by Zookeeper. Okay, so how is it different, right, you may ask. So the thing is that Pulsar internally is, is basically the, the internal architecture is very efficient, is a distributed tiered architecture too. Again, you know, it separates out the compute from the storage, as you can see, Bookkeeper handles all of the log messages, so it's very efficient. And so all of these, right, stateless broker is basically handle all of the messages, handling the interaction with producers and consumers. So very um, kind of uh, convenient. And it solves the problems of both on. Now, if you, your environment already has Kafka running, has Rapid MQ, some queuing system, basically use Pulsar as kind of like the layer of interacting with you know the rest of the company too. It's very it's a next generation of enterprise messaging systems. And this kind of like kind of show it to you too. And also another feature of Pulsar is its geo replication. So basically too, um, it also helps you, you know, you have different regions of you know uh, in the world that is handling you know different data center. You can also do replication easily. It's already built in, it's a matter of configuration. You can also do selective you know message replication and during you know kind of when the server are running too. So you don't need to stop things in order to replicate. Okay, so these are just a couple of uh, developer features. I'll just really quickly running over. We're talking about data pipeline. So how does the API work through, right? The water flowing through the pipeline gets transformed. And it's basically, you can use Pulsar function, that set of APIs you can use for transforming. Let's say, for example, doing a map you call, doing filter, all of these are also provided by Pulsar functions. And then, okay, and then this is just an illustration is Pulsar function is serverless function platform. You just write it once, deploy it, let the Pulsar infrastructure, the event streaming platform manage it for you inside you know, this, uh, this whole infrastructure. Pulsar schema is there to help you if you want to um, leverage on it to kind of manage your message payload. It supports like primitive data type, key value pair, Afro, JSON, protobuf as well. So very flexible. And there's also this concept of Pulsar IO. So I talk about the source and the sync kind of connectors. You basically can write your own sync and to write your own connectors, I should say. So basically, you know, and, and as I kind of show it to you, right, over here, let's re revisit this. You can be connecting with an Another database or kind of talking with Paul, uh, with Kafka, for example, is all there. You can easily connect. And also, too, in terms of API, our Pulsar has this data sex as a starlight API protocol level compatibility for Pulsar layer that can work with, you know, it's on the protocol layer working with Kafka. You don't need to throw away your old Kafka um, messaging systems. You don't need to throw away your JMS or RabbitMQ. It's there. Use your API to connect them as well. Okay, so this really, really quickly, our uh, data stacks manage cloud. Oh, uh, am I kind of time's up? Yeah, I kind of talked for yeah, too yeah. long, sorry. Okay. Time is up, so if you can just uh, wrap up like 30 okay. seconds. Yeah, I'm almost done too. I was just gonna really quickly just show all of these, uh, you know, the the resources too. So folks can kind of take a look at this through my, um, uh, you know, my slide deck. And I also have a Twitch stream too, I wanted to point out. And with that, there's also Awesome Esther at Datastacks. If you want to get some example, Kafka versus Pulsar. And also, oops. Actually, I think I'm not here, <laughs> sorry. Okay, and then this is slide deck again. And also thank you very much. And this is how you can get a hold of me. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so. Thank you, Mary. C can you go back to your uh, QR code uh, at least? For sure. Sure, so sure. they can have access to the slide and all the things sure. you can share. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Okay, thank Perfect. you. Perfect, we'll just let a few seconds for people to take it. Okay, sure. And thank you very much, Mary. A lot of content again, a lot of great things to do with Pulsar, but uh, yeah, we'll let people discover uh, everything sure. uh, by the slide. Okay. And any questions you... in particular? No, no questions. Uh, yeah. we, we, don't, we didn't have any more time for questions. Oh, okay. All right. Um, okay, no problem. All right then. Thank, thank you. you